and we're back. Now the objective is to add the planes that we had in the original scene, uh, but before we can do that we need to download two new assets, the plane mesh itself and a trail texture. So I want you to go on this repo here, I'll leave the link in the description of the video, and I want you to download these two files, mask.png and then plane scene.glb. And I want you to put those files with the same structure that we have here. So a folder called plane with the scene.glb file in it, and then mask.png in the other folder. So let's do that next. Once we have the new mask and the glb file, we can start by importing the new texture. And then we need a way to download the glb file. So we first need to import a new module, the gltf loader with this line. Now we can scroll back down and import the plane mesh here. Usually when you import a new, a new GLTF file, it will have a scene property with some children in it. Uh, what I'm essentially doing here is directly selecting the very first mesh of this import, which is going to be our plane. Now, this looks a little bit strange, but it's going to be useful later. So what I'm doing here, I'm creating an array and it's going to contain some data for each of the planes that we are going to create for, for the scene. So we'll have to create a new function called make plane that takes as parameters these inputs. So yeah, let's do that next. Okay, let's take a moment to understand what I'm doing with this function. So we are cloning the plane mesh that we give as an input, then um, we have to scale it down a lot because the mesh is pretty, it's pretty big. I'm not sure what kind of units they use, by the, but it's, it's so big that we have to like uh, scale it down by almost three orders of magnitude. And it has some rotation and position that is uh, applied to the beginning that I don't like and I don't want. So with these three lines, I'm basically resetting the position, the rotation that originally comes with the GLB file that we downloaded. Um, then, since this plane is com it, it's comprised by multiple meshes, so what this function does is it basically traverse, traverses all the children of the mesh, and if those children are of type mesh, then we are going to apply the environment map and make sure that they can cast and receive some shadows. Now we're creating a group. A group is a TreeJS object that is able to group multiple plush meshes on it, and we are going to add the plane to the group and then the group to the scene. Now what I'm doing here is I'm creating a Y offset. Uh, this Y offset is going to be used to basically translate the plane um, from the center of the scene. So in this case it's going to translate the plane within the Y axis by, an, by a factor of 10.5 plus a random number between 0 and 1. Also remember that this object is going to be returned and stored inside the planes data array, which we're going to use immediately here inside the render loop. Let's expand a little bit the animation loop and let's include this block. What am I doing here? So for each plane data object, which is basically the object that we returned from the make plane function. Uh, the group is basically the TreeJS group that contains the mesh of the plane. We are resetting its position and its rotation each time that we are re-rendering the scene, essentially. What I'm doing also is I'm translating the plane in the y-axis by y-offset, as I mentioned before. And I'm also rotating it on the x-axis by uh, 90 degrees because for some reason the initial GLB file faces downward after I apply the position and the rotation. So with this line here I'm basically rotating the plane to make sure that it faces forward. And the result should be this. It's a bit hard to see but if you refresh the page and zoom in a little bit you'll notice that uh, the plane is being rendered at the very top of the, of the sphere. And that's what we want it. Now we are going to try and move it a little bit. But before, a quick explanation. All right, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the video. So if you can survive this one, you're good to go. Here is what we're going to try and do. Um, we already translated the plane by 
roughly 10 and a half units uh, from the center of the scene. And what we want to do next is to rotate the plane uh, along this angle. So we're going to choose a random angle. Uh, for example, initially we'll set 0.5 as a random angle and we're going to rotate the plane around this angle. So for example, it will end up being here. Once we have that, we will try to make the plane rotate like this. So in this motion, here and here, it will basically form a, a cone of directions. So let's see how to do this first. All right, we'll start by adding two new uh, variables in the return statement of the make plane function. The first one is basically going to determine how big is the cone of direction that the plane will follow. Uh, we decided when I was drawing it that we're going to start with 0.5, but then we'll make this into a random number. Then this is going to be a, a variable that keeps track of how much we have rotated the plane along that cone of direction. Each frame, we're going to update this value and it's going to keep track of where the the uh, plane is relative to the rotation that we want that, that we wanted to follow on the cone of direction that we decided. Next step will be to make a clock. Actually, we were still missing one, and then to get the delta of the clock. And for those of you who don't know, this is basically going to return how much time has passed since the last frame. Uh, if it's sixty frames frames per second, usually this is going to be a value. Uh, of 0 0.016, so 16 milliseconds. Okay, now let me try to explain what I'm doing here. Remember, we are initially rotating the plane uh, such that it doesn't face downward. Then we're going to translate it by roughly 10 and a half units. And as a last step, I'm going to apply this rotation. It's basically rotating the plane along the Z axis of the scene by an amount that is radius, which is set to 0 0.5, because as of now it's a fixed value that is 0 0.5. Let's see what that did to the scene. All right, the plane was supposed to be here, but now it has been rotated such that it appears here. So what we did is basically we choose the z-axis of the plane and we rotated the plane around the z-axis such that it's positioned here. Now the next step is going to make sure that it can, it can follow the this motion and to do that, we'll have to rotate the plane that sits here along this axis, the y-axis. And that's going to be our next step. Okay, first we are updating the rotation property of plane data. This is the property that keeps track of how much we have rotated the plane. Then afterwards, we are choosing the y-axis of the scene and then rotating the plane that was previously rotated ar around the z-axis, now we're rotating it around the y-axis by uh, this variable over here. And by the way, when you are looking at these rotations, unfortunately I can't explain you why, but you have to um, think through them from bottom to top. So you have to read them from this one, which is the last one, uh, and then this will be the next one, than this one and this one, basically from bottom to top. So let's see what this did to our scene. It works. Our epi plane is doing exactly what we wanted. Um, as of now, it's rotating around a fixed uh, radius of 0 0.5. We're going to make this random. And not only that, but we decided that basically the cone of direction that the plane is going to follow is only this one, where the y axis. Uh, points at the top of the scene. We want to change that, so we want to use a random axis for the rotation of the plane, uh, such that it doesn't always start from the top, like it could be here, or here, or at the bottom, and that's going to be our last step. Um, I know that it's a little bit difficult to reason about these things, so for those of you that haven't yet thrown your keyboard away, I promise this is the last step, and then we'll have um, everything that we need to basically spawn a bunch of planes and have fun while seeing them rotating around, around our scene. So I'm setting the radius to a random number that is going to be around from 0 to roughly 80 degrees. And then I'm going to add... Uh, okay, I can't convert this 
degrees, but basically it's 0.2 radians. Uh, this makes sure that we have like a minimum radius. Otherwise, the plane would just rotate in place and it, it, it doesn't look good. Um, then the next step is also going to make the initial rotation random. Uh, otherwise, when we spawn a bunch of planes, if they all start at the same place, it looks a little bit... Um, I don't have a term for it. It looks a little bit robotic. Like we want to make sure that this is smooth and like that you think that these planes haven't started all at the same time. So we're also going to apply a random rotation here from zero to uh, 360 degrees. And this is how you would do that. Now, finally, we have to choose a random axis and a random rotation around that axis to um, rotate the cone of direction that the plane will follow. As I mentioned, as of now, it's always going to rotate from the top side of the sphere, but we don't want that. We want to make sure that it can rotate anywhere along the sphere. To do that, we first have to choose a random axis and then a random rotation around that axis. I'll first make a new function to make this easier. Uh, basically, it's just returning a random number between minus one and one. And I'm immediately using this function to make a new vector that contains a bunch of numbers between minus one and one. And then we are normalizing this vector to make sure that, um, that the length of the vector is one. And this is going to be our random axis. Uh, for the random axis rotation, we're just doing the same thing that we're doing here. So we're choosing a random number between zero and 360 degrees. I promise that we're getting close. So this is the hopefully last step of this journey. We have to make a final rotation. After we did all of this, our final rotation will be around a random axis by a random rotation. So let's see what this did to our scene. Okay, I kind of like the direction that this plane decided to follow. Take a look at that. Uh, it's, well, first of all, it's a wider cone than the one that we had before. It's almost filling the entire uh, radius of the sphere. And it decided to choose roughly this axis because you see that it's following this uh, cone. And yeah, this basically means that what we did works. Uh, when I first refreshed the page of the first few times, I didn't see any plane at all and I was kind of freaked out what the hell has happened. And then I, I realized that they were hiding behind uh, in the, in the backside of the sphere. So also take a look and make sure that they are not hiding somewhere here where you can't see them uh, and make you think that, they, that everything doesn't work well. In reality, it does. I am very sorry if I uh, destroyed the keyboard of some of you that are watching this video. I know that this is not easy to reason about because rotations in general in game dev are excruciatingly difficult, but I hope that even if you understood the first part, it's already like great. So be proud of yourself. Uh, well, our next step finally is to add a bunch of planes and see how they look. Alright, and this last step is so easy that it doesn't even require any explanation. I'm just going here uh, in the planes data array and I'm going to press Ctrl V as long as my heart's desire. So let me do one, two, three, four, five, and a bunch more just for good measure. Let's see what this did to our scene. Uh, it's gonna be fun. All right, the sky became quite crowded. Uh, there's a bunch of people flying around in every direction. And the cool thing about this is that every time you refresh the page, you're going to see different planes flying in different directions. Uh, so this is super cool. Uh, I wouldn't recommend in a real world scenario to have this many planes in this scene because each of these planes is like four different meshes. Uh, and since we also have to render the shadow of the plane, like here, there are hundreds of draw calls displayed. Most of the modern GPUs can handle this just fine, but if you were to push this on a mobile phone, uh, that could be a bit problematic. And there we go, that's the end of the video. I hope that I didn't destroy too many keyboards for those of you that decided to smash it while trying to understand the rotation part. I know that it's difficult, um, and in computer graphics there is, there is a saying that goes something like, if it looks good, then it means that it works, and I stand by that. Uh, um, on the next video though, we're going to have a bunch of missing elements. So in the original scene, we had a bunch of rings that were following the, the movement of your mouse. And the planes, uh, if you look carefully, they were also leaving a trail behind them. So we're also going to add that. So stay tuned. And yep, if you didn't already, please like and subscribe to the video. It's going to help the algorithm and I would really like if you did that. 
So, having said that, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.